Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria where we are currently working on getting our deficit under control. We just got modern sewerage which is going to help but also not going to help. We'll get additional max weekly construction progress which will be... It, it doesn't really help us necessarily but it does allow us to focus our construction a little bit more. So that is definitely an interesting thing. And we'll get some additional infrastructure out of it as well. So that's not too bad. We're continuing to work on Garani, of course. And we're also continuing to work on our coffee plantations here. So 19 weeks on our railway. I do want to go back to war soon. Fascist Great Britain now leads British Empire. Great Britain left the power block. Um, okay. I kind of want to investigate that. So I'm guessing Great Britain won, or rather was defeated by fascist Great, Great Britain. Emperor George Conroy. Okay. So that definitely sounds like fascist Great Britain won. They are disinterested towards us now. That's interesting. We're going to improve relations with them. Because, uh, yeah. They're not protective, actually. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, they're protective. Okay. So that just needed to update. Sounds good. We finished up some colonization down over here. And we're going to continue to work on that. But this is now unincorporated. We're going to want to incorporate that. But that will take time. And more importantly, that will take bureaucracy. So, let's put in a government administration in Sao Paulo. That'll be done in 14 weeks, but that does mean that our railway and our coffee plantations are going to be further delayed. That's understood. Now, I want to take a look at Argentina. They are very, very weak. They have zero out of five raised conscript battalions. Incredibly weak. They have no friends. We're truced with them, unfortunately. I would love to do this. Four years left on that. Man, I think we'll want to go after Bolivia, to be honest. If we were to do this, would anyone be interested in it? We could make them into our protectorate. How are we doing on getting Peru annexed? We're working on it. Okay. We could make Bolivia into our protectorate. It would be a little bit of a fight to make it happen. Or we could simply take over their states. How much aggressive expansion would that be? 8.4, 7.7, 22.3, and 6.9. So that would be significant. I think we should make them into our protectorate. I think that's the way to go here. No one is likely to do anything about this. We'll confirm this. And we're going to need to raise forces and send them over, right? So they're going to decline this, obviously. And we're going to need to raise a number of our forces. So this is going to put us at an equivalent footing with them when we don't count the Peruvian forces. Let's raise that for now. And we'll see how that goes. Equivalent footing in terms of number of units, right? So we'll see how that goes with the Peruvian army on our side. Now, they're still aloof towards us, which is pretty funny. We are... Yeah, this is fine. This is completely fine. We're busily dropping their liberty desire, but it's not going down by very much, right? So that is okay. We'll, we'll demand annex country eventually. But for now, that's not the goal. So we're at plus 34, plus 32 right now. Okay. Well, we got some artistic expressions on census suffrage here. We'll take the Petit Bourgeoisie interest group approval, I think. That brings us up to 58%. Not too bad. So we, we're holding a couple of forces in reserve here, but it's not very many. I'm very interested in attacking Bolivia here and getting that under control. We are running a pretty hefty deficit, and I'm going to bump our taxes up for right now. 
It's not going to be great, and I'm also interested in maybe levying a consumption tax on something. We're at 97.5, but we can definitely consider dropping our road maintenance decrees in some of these locations. So something like that. So at this point, this might give us some issues, but that's understood. And I want to consider putting in a couple of consumption taxes. Tobacco's a good one. Another one that would be good would be coffee. We're going to be massively increasing our coffee production. Another good one would be luxury furniture. And then we can do two additional. So we're going to do porcelain. And then we're going to do, I guess, I don't want to do glass. I'm going to do wine. So that's going to put us fairly positive in our finances. We're going to be paying off our debt over the next little while and get that snowball rolling. Once this war is over and we put these guys down, we're going to consider dropping taxes at that point. Our manpower is not great out over here, I'm noting. Okay, so that's definitely a thing. Do we want to demand anything else here? We could toss in war reparations, but to be honest, they're going to be our protectorate. So I think it'll be fine. I think this is completely A-OK. -okay. So our current plantation society is not getting any prosperity at this moment, but that's OK. This government administration is finishing now. So with that done, that should bring us positive in our bureaucracy. And we're quite positive right now financially. So we're going to be paying off this, this debt that we have reasonably quickly. Our interest payments are going to be decreasing week by week. And that is going to be fantastic for us. War with Bolivia has broken out. And let's see how these battles are going. We're winning. And we're... we're hang on. This is Bolivia. Okay, we're winning this too. So we're winning both of these engagements. That is perfect. We don't need to raise up anything else. So that sounds good. We're going to square away the south, and then we're going to square away the north is the overall idea, and take over South America. That seems like a good way to go. So our railways and our coffee plantations are slowly being worked on. We definitely are most interested right now in paying off our debt and getting that interest payment down. But we're going to be considering fairly soon expanding our construction but we absolutely do want to cut our taxes first that'll be an after war sort of thing checking in here wood and grain are currently expensive noted and we have a low training rate. yes we know that that's the case that is because we're sacking our military wages right now we may actually want to raise those up that's not going to cost that much and for the moment that's probably a good thing to do to just bring up our training rate a little bit. So we have nobody at this front at this moment. We're going to wrap up this front soon enough. I'm going to dispatch this army over to this front because I don't feel like we need both of our armies here, but Peru also has this under control. So this isn't all that big of a deal. Excellent. So we're going to win this battle here without any real problems. And Bolivia will come under our control. They're not going to be super happy about it, I think. But they will definitely come under our control. Beautiful. We're up to 10k, or we were up to 10k. Also, we finished that railway, and we finished a coffee plantation as well. That's really, really good. So I'm very glad to see that we are making solid progress on this. We're also making solid progress on our colonizations over here in Alto Paraguay. And we're going to want to incorporate this eventually. But for now, this is reasonably fine. We do have this event over here. Abraham Lincoln wants sick leave. Hmm. We'll scour the vicinity for any assassins on the double. Abraham Lincoln is currently wounded. So that's understood. Okay. So we're going to wrap up this war very swiftly here. I'm surprised that this battle is still ongoing. There's only seven troops. And our wounded is going up very quickly with one enemy troop. 
This guy is very effective. Look at this number. Wow, okay. <laughs> that was insane. Absolutely bonkers. That one troop killed or wounded probably 400 of ours. That's nuts. Absolutely insane. Well, we're going to win this war anyway. It really doesn't matter. We're going to make Bolivia into our protectorate here. They wouldn't accept this right now. They have seven reasons not to. Actually, now they would. Hang on. Propose that. Boom. War is over. Bolivia is now our protectorate, and I immediately want to begin working on this problem. So, cold relations, clout of political lobby interest groups in government, economic dependence, and truce. Sure. So we want to pretty much immediately begin improving relations with them. And we probably also want to... Let's see, where was that button to reduce their payments? Overlord actions. Uh, let's see here. So it should be in here somewhere. There was an option that we had in Peru to, yeah, reduce subject payments. I'm not seeing that here with Bolivia. It might be because relations are too bad. Okay. Well, we're going to improve relations with them for now. And we're definitely going to do something about this liberty desire. The cold relations are the primary problem here. So we are immediately working on that. So Bolivia is under our control at this point. I would like to consider dropping our taxes back down to here. We are still running a very small surplus, although that's probably going to be... It's basically a balanced budget, right? It's probably going to be going up and down a little bit, but as long as we're running a small surplus, we are still going to be chipping away at that interest payment, and that's what I'm interested in doing here. So that sounds good. We're going to be getting this transportation shortage in Santa Catarina worked on here in a week. So that looks great. And our GDP is currently broken 10, or rather 9 million. So that sounds good. Coffee plantations in Minas Gerais, yes. And railway in Bajo Paraguay, we do have a transportation shortage there. It is minus 40% construction. This is due to the turmoil. Okay, let's do a violent suppression over here just to reduce that. Just to make this much more efficient. Yeah, that was a pretty significant swing. 40 to 15%. That's impactful. I like it. So we're going to get this railway done soon enough. And we're currently at plus 9k. Okay, plus 3k. That's still pretty good to be honest. Allies of convenience. So we got an advance here. Good job, Abraham Lincoln. That'll be fine. Wonderful. So, of course, the landowners are not happy. But we definitely want to get this dealt with. That will be absolutely great. Interesting that it didn't color Bolivia our color there. It's probably because they're a protectorate. We would need to reduce their, their autonomy to dominion first. Yeah, that'll be fine. We definitely want to drop their liberty desire, but that'll take a little bit of time. Economic dependence on Overlord is going to go up. Change rate scaling from high liberty desire. Yeah, that's okay. The truce is going to tick away, and the poor relations are going to improve. Okay. So yeah, that should be reasonably fine. We are on amicable relations here with Peru. We can see that they're actually going up right now. Plus 0.33 from relative prestige below 3.0 multiplier desired for Puppet. Currently 2.9x. So our prestige is slightly too low for Peru. And that means that we should come into our budget and we should crank up our government wages a little bit. Actually, that doesn't increase our prestige, does it? It does not. So what we should end up doing is finding some way to bump up our prestige. We could get prestige from military wages, so going up to 10% prestige from army power projection. That might be enough. That is enough. Perfect. Okay, so that looks good. 
We did get a mining accident. That is unfortunate. And political movement support for landed voting. Sure. And we've got technical talents here. So a pro-country lobby is created targeting two Sicilies. What would that be? Oh, they want to get closer ties to two Sicilies. No. No. No, thank you. Two Sicilies is not particularly relevant here. So that is absolutely fine. We're 20 weeks away from our railway in Bajo Paraguay, and we're continuing to work on these transportation shortages. The transportation shortages are our only real problem. We have an election in six months, and I'm afraid we're not going to get census suffrage done before that. We've had a lot of really strange roles on it, like, that haven't done much for us. I was hoping to get it done before this election. But I don't think that's even possible at this point. We'll see if it happens, but I think we've been delayed a little too much. It might have to be next election before this census suffrage takes effect. We've got production and agitation here. I guess we can boost the Liberal Republican Party. That seems okay. They are looking to pull 48.5% of the vote. That's going to be a very contested government. So that is absolutely understood. It would be much better if census suffrage was passed, but alas, it is not. Oh, hey, we just got a bunch of progress on River of Coffee. That's interesting. I'm not sure what got us all that progress. I mean, we have been building coffee plantations. So there's that. I mean, that sounds good. So we're at 42% literacy, that's good. Our GDP is on a bit of a downturn right now, but that's not necessarily shocking. This is all fairly normal stuff. Census suffrage, we're going to hopefully progress to voting here in nine days, but I really don't think we're gonna get another roll before the election. So that is sad, no doubt about it. Okay, we did progress to voting. That's going to be in 162 days. So yeah, that'll be 80 days after the election. Sad, but not the end of the world. We're going to have a contested government, it looks like. I mean, we're already on a contested government, so it's reasonably fine. It's not a significant status quo change. So should be okay. It just would have been better to have census suffrage done before the election, but here we are. So the railway in Bajo Paraguay is going to be done in three weeks. That will be great. That'll get one of those local input goods shortages dealt with. And Abraham Lincoln would have a point here for 30% momentum to the Liberal Republican Party. And that is really very good. Do that. So that means that they're currently targeting a 50.9% majority rather than the plurality victory that they would have had previously. I would rather have a majority victory than a pl plurality to work with. So that would be absolutely great. We just finished up that railway. That is going to, of course, drop off one of those input goods shortages for transportation. And we just finished a coffee plantation as well. So that seems great. We've only got four railways queued up here, but we have six input goods shortages. I believe we just built a railway in Bajo Paraguay, so that is going to be worked on. We've got one in Para. Do we have a railway there? No. That is currently being built. Okay. In Rio Grande do Norte, there's no railway queued up. I'm going to queue that. I put it at the top of the list, but I'm not actually going to put it there. In Mato Grosso, we do have a railway queued. In Goias, we have a railway queued. And here we have a railway queued. Okay. So I'm going to move this railway down, and we're going to position that right about there. Perfect. And this is actually building at a really decent rate. We're keeping these fairly similar. So we're... Garani started a native uprising diplomatically. Okay, we'll get to that. We do need to currently drop our violent suppression here and put it in here. Or wait, where was that? Where was that construction at? In Para. So we're at minus 30% construction efficiency. There's not turmoil here. This is happening because of the Amazon. That's fine. So I'm just going to send the 4th Brazilian Army over to deal with Garani. They're doing a native uprising. That's normal. It's fully expected. 
So our Wurgle is colonization rights. Okay. I don't think anybody's actually going to join here, for the record. Yeah, nobody's going to join. So that seems fine, and we'll just deal with this. The grand plan pays off, huh? So the industrialists would get a bunch of momentum here, or we could reduce our loan interest rate and increase our gold reserve limit for five years. Reducing our interest rate is very impactful. We're paying 7k per month, or rather per week right now, in interest. So we're going to reduce our interest rate for five years. That's beautiful. Pedro is our new president. Okay. And the Liberal Republican Party wins with just barely a majority of the vote. Okay. The best government we can do is 58 here. That's fine. So since the suffrage is now up to 75%, so the Liberal Republican Party winning there will allow us to do a lot of pretty decent legal changes. I'm pretty happy about that. Salista so people are migrating from our country to Nebraska. Oh, okay. I'm not so happy about that, but sure, whatever. It's understood. We are going to need eventually to continue to drop our taxes, and I would like to drop off some of these consumption taxes eventually as well. But for the moment, I mean, I'd like to go down to low taxes. We're not really in an economic position to do that right now. But we'll get there fairly soon, I feel like. We are currently down to five impacus shortages of transportation. Engines are expensive and grain is expensive. So I'm not going to handle the grain situation right now, although I probably should, but I am going to build a motor industry in Sao Paulo. Hang on, am I? Yes. Yes, I am. And we should probably actually build, like, a couple of grain producers. So rice farms produces grain and maize farms do as well. Rice farms are a little higher on the grain production. Yeah. So rice farms are the way to go. I'm going to build... What's our current uh, market balance here? It doesn't say in that tooltip? Okay. Market balance is minus 530. So these create 30 per level. So if we open up a calculator, 530 divided by 30 is 18 of these. Okay, we can do that. Something like that. That will massively reduce the grain cost. Now, this is in Bajo, Paraguay. So, the violent suppression is still going to have to be here to increase this construction speed significantly. And that'll be fine, but I do want to move up the motor industry, and I want to move up the railways here. So we're kind of delaying these coffee plantations a bit. We've been building a lot of coffee plantations, that's for sure. But I do want to move up these rice farms, and we're going to put this railway about here like this. We'll have the motor industry be perhaps about here or so. And then we're going to intersperse in these rice farms like this. I want to significantly drop the price of grain because we know that the price of grain is something that is causing us issues in our lower strata standard of living. If we go in here, we can see their largest expense is grain at 20.7%. So let's get going on that, and that'll be fine for now. These will build quite quickly, about eight weeks per farm. So that's not too bad. Cool. So this war is going to break out very, very shortly here. I, I say war. It's not going to be a war. This is going to be a slaughter, really. That's the correct terminology. Census suffrage is going to pass here almost certainly. Wow, it advanced. Okay. Well, coffee talk, huh? Hmm. Well, we could definitely... Shield him from intelligentsia blowback. Sure. So that seems fine. The landowners are, of course, very upset, right? There's no doubt about that. They're at minus 14. They're going to be very upset for a while. That's fine. We're working on reducing their power. What is their current clout? 14.5? Okay. That definitely needs to come down. So organized crime here, we don't really want to spend money on this. Minus 10% authority is probably not bad. That puts us right at even. We had some spare authority that we couldn't really utilize, so we can use it in that way to save ourselves some money. So this is fine. Garani has capitulated. 
And we have a new national hero. Uh, we will definitely proclaim him a national hero. And the question is, does that allow us to integrate the Salistas? The answer is no. Okay. So we need the cultural turmoil here to continue to drop. And we're working on incorporating all of this. Do we have any states that need to be incorporated at this moment? Actually, yes. Three of them. But they're being incorporated. So we do need to reset production methods in Corrientes. That seems fine. And there's a secession movement. Palatinians. Okay. Who else is going to go with that? Bajo Paraguay. Well, that's where we're building the rice farms. Okay. I'm assuming we have violent suppression going on there. Uh, let's go into decrees. There we go. Violent suppression. Yeah, that's in Bajo Paraguay. So, they definitely need to be improved here. Turmoil is 50%. If we can drop that turmoil just a little bit, that would be great. We're going to enact census suffrage. If we had passed that, which we had a 75% chance of, that would have dropped radicalism by 277k, which would have been pretty, pretty significant. Man, we've had such awkward rolls on census suffrage. I think that would have prevented this secession. Okay. So, I'm going to cancel any constructions we have going on in Bajo Paraguay. Unfortunately, it's not going to change anything. We're just going to do this. Like, that's going to secede. We're going to have to deal with them. 10% of them become more loyalist. Ooh. We'll go negative in our bureaucracy here, but that's probably okay. I'm just going to build a single government administration over in Bajo Paraguay. That'll be fine. And they are going to drop their turmoil here to 38%. That's still brewing up. So 33% is the threshold. Noted. Let's get rid of this then. We are not going to put that construction there. It's not going to get done before the end. We're going to put it in Pernambuco instead. Okay. So these guys are going to rebel. They're not going to win, but they're going to rebel. And it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to deal with this Palatinian succession, or rather, secession, and we are going to continue working on all of this construction. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Atala, Andy McGar, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Tommy, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.